me one eight. Well, <coughs> problem two point one one eight, and what you have is you have let's say <coughs> axis x y and z. Then there is a force here. That's F two, and that's given as one twenty I plus ninety J, then negative eighty K, and that force is in Newton. Then you have another force given as the same F one. Its magnitude is given as six. 100 Newton. <coughs> then we know three angles. We know the angle between the force and x axis as 120 degrees. Then angle between y axis and the force is 60 degrees. Then you have angle between the force and the z axis as 45 degrees. And the question here is to determine. the projection of the force F2 along the force F1. So, <coughs> we want to find the projection of this force along this direction. So that's the question and <coughs> the same thing when you say projection you're also saying that you're looking for the component of this force along this direction. So <coughs> we use the second equation which means I want to find the component of force 2 along the force F1. So that component will be the force <coughs> vector F2, then you do a dot product between the unit vector, let's say U1, which goes along the axis which is along the force F1. <coughs> so you're looking at a unit vector which is u1 and it's in the direction of force F1. Now <coughs> this one is already known. We are given the whole thing in Cartesian vector form. So we don't have to do anything for that vector. But we do need to find this given the information about force F1. Now what we have is we have the force magnitude that's 100 Newton. Then we have the angle alpha 1, that's the angle between force and x axis, that's 120 degrees. Then we have angle beta 1, that's again the angle between force and y axis, that's 60 degrees. Then we have the angle between force and z axis, that's 45 degrees. So we know all these three, these are known as direction angles and what you have here is something very similar to case 1 where you have the force and you have three angles between force and the three different axes. So the force vector by itself will going to be 600 cosine 120 times of i then 600 cosine of 60 times of j plus 600 cosine 45 times of 10. You just take the force magnitude and then you multiply that by the direction cosines 
along x, y, z. But that's not what we need. What we need is u1 or a unit vector which is along the force f1. So you're going to look at force vector. You're going to divide it by its own magnitude. And that's really 600. So we take this equation and we divide the whole thing by its magnitude. So it's be cosine 120 i plus cosine 60 j plus cosine 45 times k. So that gives you the <coughs> equation you're looking for for the force F1 and then from there you found the unit vector along the force F1. Now <coughs> we could uh, skip this uh, step. I mean if you knew directly what is the direction angles then you should be able to write this equation without going through this step. So <coughs> We go back to the very first equation. That means F2 is component along direction 1. That's F2 <coughs> dot U1. So we have the force here. Let's say that's equation A. We have the unit vector. That's equation B. So now we want to do the dot product of this with this and we have the equation right here the one we will use so you take the x component here <coughs> that's 120 then you take the next one which is cosine 120 which is this then you take the next component which is 90 you multiply that by cosine 60 then you take the third component which is negative 80 you multiply this by cosine 45 third component here then you add all of this and that should give you the answer we're looking for that's 71.6 Newton so again I repeat <coughs> that to work on this problem all you needed was the force vector that was known and a unit vector along the direction you want to find the projection. Now we're going to look at one more example. So there is a peg here and that's the point 